Now as you guys know, we are big fans of combination locks on this YouTube channel, so today I am going to try my best to create the fanciest and best combination lock I possibly can within one hour. Right, so this, this is kind of like our setup. So we've got some sticky pistons out here. These are going to be controlling the first combination lock. We're going to have combination locks around here. And then also a new type of lock that's going to be going in the center. And maybe another type of lock if I can fit it in and also find the time to build it. Because this outer one is going to be pretty complicated, I think. I don't really know. I haven't really tried it before. Right, so let's see if this works. So if I flick this lever... We have got full extension up there, and we have also got extension up there as well. So all of those pistons were all fully extended. Okay, so that's part one. That's all good. Now we just have to do these pistons here, which we have got some funny redstone mechanics going on. And ah, we have got a self-powering system as well. Not good. I think that should be it. Now this should, in theory, potentially, maybe, possibly work. <laughs> That's how much confidence I have in this thing. Uh, what I've done is I've created a gapless piston feed tape, but this one is considerably simpler than the one that I built the other day in the Minecraft challenge. I mean, you can see the purple line is it. That is everything. It just involves a few, few redstone timing circuits and things. But here is the piston feed tape, and if we hit this button here... It looks like it did work. Now I'm quickly going to make sure that this is actually cycling the blocks around. So let's see. Very good. And what about, say for example, these blocks here. Do these stay in order? They stay in the correct order? They do. <laughs> That's so much smarter than my design. Oh my word. <laughs> oh, how embarrassing. To make matters even worse, I've also just made it quite a bit faster as well. Okay, I'd say that's good. In fact, if we use a wooden button here... Yes, that is enough time for us to actually have this circuit involved as well. So I want to have our combination lock flush with the wall. So if we run this out like this and then run it into the side like that, we should now have a feed tape the retracts back from the wall and ass broken. Just in time, look at this. So it retracts, moves everything, and then just about gets it back in time to be back flush with the wall. Okay, now we have to place the secondary feed tape in that's actually going to control the combination lock. Now this type of piston feed tape is one that I have quite a bit of experience with. In theory, it should work. I can't have that sort of fighting talk when it could potentially go wrong. But when we cycle this, feed tape round, that one out the back should also cycle round. That looked pretty good to me. Oh, no, <laughs> how embarrassing. In my defense, it was because I forgot to place in one essential piece of redstone. But now what this means is that both of these redstone circuits are synced up. So when we hit this, that cycles. This one cycles as well, so we can track the location of this piston feed tape using this piston feed tape with this cauldron, which is now filled in with water. Okay, that's the first one done. Well, of course, it did need to have some colors put into it. So that is now done, and this is looking... Of course it breaks! Of course it breaks! Once I've filled in all the colors. So now I have to redo the entire thing. <laughs> Finally, that is now fixed, and I have to say that combination lock part of this redstone circuitry has taken a lot longer than I expected, so we really are under pressure now to get all of this done. And the first thing I'm actually having to do is I'm having to redo the inputs for this entire thing. So this is coming down here, and that's going to make its way across like this, and this is literally the input that I've just created for our piston feed tapes. So how am I actually going to wire that in? So if we have that, we can run this in using redstone, so we can put redstone dust up like that. But we need to make way for all of our item frame combination locks and everything. Oh my word, I really want to get this done. Okay. It's still not low enough. What am I doing with my life? 
Is it obvious that I'm not particularly good under pressure? I feel like that should be quite plainly clear. Anyway, what we're doing is we are taking out comparator outputs from our item frames, and what these comparators are going to do is they're going to save the signal strength that we have, I hope, because otherwise we're not actually going to be able to build this thing. So these comparators are just going to run out like this, and they are going to make their way into a little bit of a comparator checking circuit, then an AND gate, and then obviously all of these circuits are actually going to be running into one big AND gate. Now to make our combination lock just a little bit easier to remember for us, I have made sure that all of these item frames have to be in the same position. So obviously you could make it so that all the item frames point in different directions, but I would definitely forget that and get locked out of my base. So for this one, we're just going to be using this design. And I have to say, I can't say that I have used this way of doing the item frame locks before. I'm not 100% certain, don't quote me on it, but this seems like a new method for me and it seems to be super compact. I mean, look, that is the circuit there. And now that I look at it, do I recognize it? <laughs> I don't really know. I put a lot of redstone contraptions. So these redstone lines right here are going to be the output lines for these circuits, which I actually have to put all the items in all the item frames. So let's quickly do that. And actually, let's all put them to the correct position just to make sure that these things switch off. That side has, this side hasn't, because this is the output line to our piston feed tape combination lock. So only when this cauldron is in this position, then that redstone line will turn off. Okay, final one now, which is kind of a new type of lock, which I've never tried before, but I think it should be pretty self-explanatory. It's going to be like a rhythm-based lock. So you have to make sure that you hold the lever down for the correct number of seconds. Now, the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to have one rising edge monostable circuit. I'm then going to have one falling edge monostable circuit. And when you flick the lever, that's going to shoot out the rising edge monostable circuits. Then we're going to run that into a delay. That's going to make its way around something like this, maybe around here, and then maybe back across like that. And then when you turn off the lever, that's going to trigger the falling edge monostable circuit. And what you have to do is make sure both of these signals reach this block at exactly the same time. And the only way that you can do that is by timing your switch off perfectly. It's a cool idea in theory, but let's see how well it works. So we have got to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, not quite. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. It works! And it's five seconds. That's easy. Nice! All right. Okay, uh, let's connect all of these things up, and then we should have ourselves a working system just about. We're going to need to add in a reset line, because obviously this is just a pulse-based thing. So, everything has been reset. We have got ourselves an output. Now it is time to actually test out the contraption. The first thing that we have to do is get the right combination on the color combination lock. Now, when I say combination, that's not strictly true. We just need to get the right orientation of colors. And if you were to build this for yourselves, I would probably suggest focusing on the corner blocks. Those are going to be the most important. Now, from my recollection, this blue block here has to be in the top right-hand corner. So let's do that. Okay, and do a bit of that. And there we go. So that should be this one completed. The cauldron is in the correct location. Right, now it is time for the simple one, which is our item frame combination lock. So that's all good, and then we have one more thing to do. The lever combination lock. Well, I say once again, combination lock. No, we have to make sure that we time this lever to perfection. So here goes. One, two, three, four, five. Straight away, first time, we got ourselves a firework. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a very good firework. I swear I made it red. I also only put one in there. What a strange thing to do. Anyway, this thing is functioning. It works. And I have to say, A, I'm pretty impressed by how much I managed to pull off in one hour. That's not bad. I've done a pretty good job right there. But B, I really like the way this thing looks. This is an awesome looking combination lock. Like, to have it all in one little area like this, completely flush with the wall. We've got the item frames, we've got the levers and the button. This is cool. I would love to have one of these on the Hermitcraft server. So maybe if I work on a super secret project at some point, this is the sort of thing that I can construct. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.
Oh, and as per usual, check out the latest film on the filming channel. Link will be on the end screen. It literally just released today and it's for a review of my new phone. So if you're into that sort of thing, then you might enjoy it.